Welcome back for day two of Doodle Therapy, our bi-weekly drawing stream here on Adobe Live, where our goal is to doodle and relax together. I'm your host, Alice. I'm a muralist based in the San Francisco Bay Area, currently in Taipei, Taiwan. It's great to see some familiar faces in the chat. Um, welcome in to Celine, to Keita, Jones, to Lisette, to Amy, to Sam. If you're joining us live, please feel free to introduce yourself and say hi. Um, if you're new to the, the stream, the way this works is every week we have on a different special guest artist and we dive into a uh, unique illustration related topic together with that artist. So this week, I'm super excited uh, to be chatting with and featuring Frankie Sihi, who is a Tokyo based artist and muralist. Welcome, Frankie. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, if you joined us yesterday, we had a really great conversation about Frankie's journey, uh, creative confidence, you know, art process, etc. So I'm excited to continue that today. And we'll get to introducing Frankie in full in just a second. Um, but to start, if you're joining us live, it's always great to, you know, see who is tuning in and make new friends. So please feel free to introduce yourself, say your name, where you're from. And we always have a random question of the day. So our random question today is, if you were a Pokemon, which Pokemon would you be? And if you don't know which Pokemon you'd be, then you can also pick a fictional mythological creature as well. That's totally fine. Um, and Frankie and I will share our responses. So let us know which, which Pokemon, Pokemon you would be. Um, so the way that the show works is um, it's an interactive show, so you're totally invited to draw along with us. This week, we are creating patterns, patterns for fabric, patterns that go into other larger illustrations. So if you'd like to draw along and create a pattern, um, please feel free. And also you can share it with us on the internets as well. Uh, you can tag me at, at by Alice Lee and I would love to see. And also, you know, if you have any questions about what we're working on technically, how we, you know, did a certain thing or about, you know, what we're talking about or life and art in general, feel free to ask. Um, we want this to be as interactive as possible. Um, so yeah, welcome Frankie. Uh, I'm gonna transition over to showing some of your beautiful work here on the screen. Do you mind um, reintroducing yourself, telling us a little bit about, you know, where you're from and um, what you're all about? Yeah, no problem. So my name is Frankie. I'm half Japanese, half American. I was born and raised in Tokyo, Japan. That's where I spent the majority of my life. Um, I went to school in New York. Um, I studied fine arts um, at the School of Visual Arts, but after that I came back to Japan and I've just been painting murals, doing live paintings, um, and making designs for a lot of corporate clients. So in the past I've worked, worked on projects with Microsoft and Google, um, you know, I painted a mural for Starbucks last year and been doing a lot of collabs with Adobe as well. Um, so you can see me pictured with a mural here, but the, my largest one was like a five story parking lot in West Palm beach, Florida. If you go, if you scroll through my Instagram, you'll see that I've done like really large scale murals. Um, and, um, I try to translate that, um, into all the style is kind of always the same. I always do like these, like bright colored, <laughs> um, abstract landscapes and, um, the one up top is a live painting. So I was actually painting in front of an audience. And then the one um, below is a design that I did for a sake company for their labels. Um, and then on the right side, um, you see a daruma, which is a, I don't know if anybody knows what a daruma is, but it's a Buddhist wishing doll. Um, and if you're Japanese, like everyone knows what this is and people have this in their homes. Um, 
I have one right here. Um, cool. I have to like put it close to me so it doesn't disappear. Um, but yeah. anyway, so this is like, um, there's a story behind this. Um, when you have a goal or a wish, um, you take one of these Dajima's home and then you paint in the left eye. And then every day you look at it, it reminds you of yourself. It reminds you of your goal. So it kind of pushes you to work hard, harder. And when you achieve, but it also gives you good luck. So like when you achieve this goal, you paint in the right eye. And traditionally, you can take the Daruma, which are traditionally red. Um, and just it's just the solid red color. But you take this to the shrine um, where they burn it for you. There's like a burning ritual at the end of the year. Or you can keep it in your home because it's like a talisman of good luck or something. It's a good mm -hmm. omen for the house. So, um, yeah, so that's pretty much the story of the Daruma. So if you'd like to see more, you can go on to my Instagram at furpuff. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it's all. It's above your head. That's yep. her, um, Frankie's handle is at furpuff. Oh, right here. Like, yeah. Right here. Yeah. Um, thanks for explaining that. Your Darumas are so gorgeous i can't imagine anyone wanting to burn them um, they're more like <laughs> art pieces too um yeah. and uh oh what pokemon would you be if you were to choose so because I, I played pokemon um in japan i only know the japanese names for um oh, okay. for the characters. yeah i only know like some of them in english so but for me so I'm, i want you to guess which one i am um okay. it's uh, like it turns into something so like okay so um i'm just gonna say it's like you know evie i know the name for evie Evori. Right? yeah oh okay and then it turns into like an electric one a water one and a fire one yes right i'm the water one that's my favorite oh one. you're vaporeon <laughs> oh cool vaporeon. Um, <laughs> yes okay. You're the Japanese on. name is Showers. <laughs> that's the name. Oh, in Japan. that's so cute. Yeah. Oh, um, cool. I believe that the lore of Vaporeon is that Vaporeon can disintegrate into like a puddle of water and then reappear. Mm. Um, I'm also seeing yeah. some lovely uh, responses from the chat. So, welcome into everyone who's joining us live. Um, Amy, aka Sailor HG, says Bulbasaur. Um, and Uriel says Gyarados. Uh, also, welcome in to Coco Glez, who was our uh, guest last week. Um, Lisette, who says Togepi. That's cute. Mustafa, who's joining us from Turkey. And thank you to Jessica for the Doodle Therapy Explainer. Um, and also, welcome in to Misty from New York. Uh, Maggie says Ditto is her Pokemon mm -hmm. of choice. Um, and uh, Coco also says Bulbasaur. Um, I would be Charmander, I think. Um, oh, it's very cute. cute. It's like Charmander, but it's also very, uh, you know, fiery and flamey. Um, I, I really like the, uh, all of the starter Pokemons, but I feel like they evolve and that they turn way less cute and into kind of like fearsome, yeah. but not attractive looking. So I try not to evolve them actually. Um, also, uh, Kita Jones uh, asks Genki Desuka, which I'm not Genki sure. Genki Desuka, Ohayo gozaimasu. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, Prasad, Prasad also says Char Charizard. Um, and welcome in to Shirley Wu as well. We've got some wonderful doodle therapy familiar faces. So wow. we are going to continue with our. Uh, illustrations this week. I'm moving over to the drawing side. Um, we're creating patterns and we're going to share some tips and tricks on how to create patterns. There's a lot of really great um, tools that you can use in um, these you know, apps, uh, whether you're using Photoshop, Fresco or Illustrator. Um, you can, I, I find that it's um, pretty simple to make repeating patterns, which all patterns. I'm making a repeating pattern for fabric. So actually the reason why I asked the Pokemon question is because I uh, am gonna make a floral pattern that has Pokemon in it, which is my starting lineup. Um, so this, for example, is stylized Gyarados is my dragon. This, I'll let you guess which Pokemon this, uh, this ice bird is. And I've also got some of my other favorites 
scattered about. And then my idea is I'm working with a custom Chi Pao dressmaker uh, to create a, a custom uh, dress that's like fit to my measurements. Um, and the Chi Pao is a traditional Chinese um, dress with like usually the scalloped necks you might recognize. So I'm going to print out the pattern myself um, on fabric and then um, my friend who is making it is going to then make the chipao. So my idea is to make a Pokemon chipao, which I think would be really cool. Um, yeah, Frankie, do you mind telling us a little bit about what you're working on this week? Yeah, so usually I do these like mountain landscapes with the sky and then mountains in the foreground and then maybe like a moon in the sky. But like I wanted to do one that was just like mountains just covering the entire um, page. Um, and um, this one, this sort of composition is inspired by a Japanese Nihonga painter, Japanese painter called um, Hiramatsu Reiji. So yeah, I just wanted to try like my own version of that and um, kind of like flatten the mountains by adding patterns to it. So my experience living in Japan is like um, basically born and raised in Tokyo and have been surrounded by buildings. Um, but much of Japan is, is countryside and it's like mountains, seaside, and it's really beautiful. And every time I like drive out to anywhere outside of Tokyo, you know, the first thing you see on the highway is like the buildings, buildings start to recede and you see more mountains. And like the deeper you go into the mountains, there's something about the landscape in Japan that's like really soft and like, you know, kind of flat and um, the mountains start to look like paper. So that's always been my way of like expressing Japanese mountains was like kind of like origami. I like flatten the image, like I soften the mountains. And so this is sort of like another interpretation of Japanese landscapes through my lens. So. Wow. Yes. That sounds really uh, <laughs> cinematic actually. <laughs> uh, landscapes. Yep. Um, yeah. And Shirley who also spent time in her childhood in Japan um, says that that is such a beautiful story about the Japanese countryside. Thank you for sharing, Frankie. Um, yeah, so I can't wait to see, you know, the evolution of your chipao. Um, I think it's also cool to, to have seen your process from yesterday. Um, and if anyone is curious, you can go back and watch day one. But Frankie um, first laid out like the basic shapes and then started applying the patterns in. Uh, I'm like very similar. I like to lay out the shapes and then like tweak the details and colors, but I like to get the solids down first. Um, yeah. So, yeah. you know, today, uh, what, what's, what do you think is your focus when you look at the piece in front of you and like, how would you so, kind of proceed? So technically, like I just, now I, now that the color blocking is done, I want to add all the patterns. And then after that, I want to go back into, in, so what I've been doing is I've been making a lot of like clipping masks, um, and, uh, layering things on top of each other. So what I want to do is that I want to go in between and then make another layer and start adding gradients to the mountains. Ooh, so there's yeah. more like depth, but I, it's, it's like just subtle depth depth. And I want to use, you know, um, the different pen tools on Photoshop. I'm actually using Photoshop this time, but, um, yeah, so that's kind of like the end goal. And I want to see how far we can get in the next hour. <laughs> you know, time yeah, is- Yeah, let's do it. Essence. So I just kind of want to make this fun and, you know, not really have so many like expectations for myself, but that's the general guideline for today. Right. Um, Akita Jones in the chat is saying they're inspired to take out their sketchbook and draw. Um, you're totally invited to also create a pattern if you want. It's really fun. Um, I I'll actually demonstrate uh, the pattern tool that um, I was using yesterday um, that helps me with this. Uh, oh, and also welcome into Anne Alonso, who was our guest two streams ago. Um, okay, so I go to view. So I'm in Photoshop right now. I'll go to view and then pattern preview. Okay, so it's like a little warning sign. Um, and then it's really helpful. It basically like tiles your design so you can uh, you know, move things around and see how the repetition works. Uh, for me, like it's really helpful with seeing the composition, like maybe I need to even it out a little bit over here. Like it's maybe it's getting a little bit too chonky. So, um, you know, it's really helpful. And then you can also create um, like here, right? Uh, where there's a little bit of space between the patterns, you can 
add little elements um, to make it repeating, which is cool. And I believe that, you know, Illustrator also has similar uh, features, which just makes it a little easier. Otherwise you have to like, like copy and paste, copy and paste and try to make, try to match it up. Um, Mary asks, is this how you can make a seamless pattern? Yeah, this is totally how you can um, create a seamless pattern that you can then print on like fabric and stuff like that. I think that it's like magical, you know, it's like I made this like perfect block and now it can be replicated across all fabrics. So um, if you end up creating a pattern for the day, um, feel free to definitely check out that tool. And then also if you end up creating something and want to share it, uh, you can tag me at by Alice Lee on Twitter, Instagram, etc. Kita asks, how do I decide um, how much or little to put in my patterns? That's a great question. Um, I'm still trying to figure that out. Oops. Uh, while my pattern is cropping, um, uh, one thing that I did was I actually mocked out the context that it'll be in eventually. So in just a sec, I'll show the um, chi pao that I laid out. And that will give you a sense of how big you want the pattern to be um, in the final form. So this is this is uh, the pattern at full size. It's not really repeating. Um, but then if I want to like reduce it, it helps me see what size it'll be. Um, and then that will help me identify how many details I want to put in. If that makes sense. So I'm just going to kind of jankily mock this up really quick. Um, so you can see, you know, it's starting to repeat um, in the smaller size. And then uh, you can you can start to kind of mock it out a little. Cool. Um, and also, you know, people suggesting their favorite Pokemon in the chat is helpful because I might incorporate one, one or two of those Pokemons. Um, Frankie, do you have any ideas for how you might uh, use this pattern in the future? Or uh, are you kind of just trying to create something for fun? Um, well, I actually uh, might be painting this in real life. Like I like using Photoshop to mock up, to make mock ups for my murals. So recently, like, you know, I, I've been sort of like, um, kind of thinking about what I can do to make my Instagram look better. <laughs> so I was oh, looking really? at my your Instagram looks great. It's so uh, I, cohesive. <laughs> thank you. Um, you know, like when you work with a lot of different clients and you make murals for different people, sometimes they want something that's like completely different from what you're actually doing. And right. like, talked about that. The murals that I've been making for people have all of these limitations. Like sometimes they don't want the thing that I'm painting on canvas on their wall and they want it to be personalized, which I totally understand. It's great. And also I have to work with like the air, um, the locations, like limitations, color restrictions. Like in Japan, you can't just like paint walls. Um, <laughs> what's that Pokemon? <laughs> um, you can't yeah, just paint so walls. Yeah. So basically like um, I want to make these faux murals that I do mock-ups on buildings that like normally I wouldn't be able to paint on. So I would take pictures um, of buildings in Tokyo or just like buildings of anywhere in the world and just like do mock-ups. Um, so I might use this as like a faux mural um, layer in the future. Um, so you might be seeing this pattern Oh, on cool. my as a full mural because it would be cool to just have a wall of this somewhere um so yeah just stuff like that um or i actually might be painting this in real life and it's a mock-up for an actual painting so i don't know but yeah i i have it and um i kind of really like the colors <laughs> so i think i might be doing something with it but not sure yet yeah that's cool i mean uh mocking up your murals is a great like tip, I think for anyone watching of just, uh, really easily transforming a space. And it, I feel like, um, when you put your illustrations in context on something, there's that like 10% boost in like, it like makes the piece look better. I feel like when you 
when you put it on your wall and like mock it up in Photoshop, there's that mm. like in context boost where it's just like, wow, everything just like looks cool as a mural. Cause it's <laughs> like kind of surreal, you know, you just like threw this illustration on the wall and there it is like a portal to a, a different uh, world or something. So that's a, yeah. that's a fun activity to do. It, even if you don't have a, a wall in question. Um, and uh, yes, I asked, what's that Pokemon? And Amy and Coco both said, Ivysaur or Venusaur. Yeah, they're both very uh, similar. Um, so this is my, you know, Pokemon team lineup. I'm not sure if anyone here has played the game uh, Pokemon Let's Go with Eevee or, or Pikachu, but um, I recently got really into it with Jeffrey and um, we sped through it like starving yeah. <laughs> uh, pe like starving people who hadn't eaten their Pokemon fit, uh, share in uh, years. I hadn't played Pokemon in a long time and um, I think we almost beat the game, but um, it's it's been really fun to reconnect with like my childhood and my starting team has uh, Gyarados and Ivysaur as well as Jolteon now um, and Eevee. Yes, Jessica says that looks like a Squirtle, but if they were a plant. I actually have a small Squirtle reference in this piece. Let me know if you can spot it. <laughs> Um, one question that I want to ask you, Frankie, is um, when it comes to potential like dream projects that you want to work on down the line, do you have any dream um, projects or collaborations that you know you'd like to that are on your bucket list? Well, um, I kind of want to um, work with. Uh, architects and sort of like you know city planners and um work on like urban parks in tokyo Ooh. so i want to like reimagine the neighborhood parks inside the city and i'm not talking about these like big parks that we have like yoyogi park or shinjuku park or like you know the not the big ones but just like in japan in tokyo like when a plot of land like opens up it either becomes a parking lot or a park <laughs> and oh, okay. it's like the park that we have like in the neighborhood is like so sad looking like i'm glad it's a park and not a parking lot but like it's there's just like one rusty swing and like one public bathroom and then like fluorescent lights and it's like kind of sad so i kind of want to like bring more landscape in it and work with like the city to propose like mural ideas in these parks and either have like artists come in and paint it or the community come in and paint it together with the artist. That's so cool. So that's the thing that I want to work on over the next 10 years. Like I actually like, I think, I think about it and I really like, you know, think about my childhood and like, I think about like, like I really like going to the park. That was something that was really therapeutic for me. Um, and um, like a lot of kids grow up without touching bugs or like, you know, getting their yeah. hands dirty nowadays. Everyone's like such a germaphobe. <laughs> and I don't know if that's like actually like stimulating for the mind when they're home. I like playing video games too, but like, I just, I really want like the kids who are being born today in the city to still have that connection to nature. So that's why I want the parks in Japan inside Tokyo to have more of that natural <laughs> element to it. So, yeah. Um, Sailor Ichi, aka Amy, says that when she lived in Tokyo, her local neighborhood playground had a really cute mural and a painting with lots of plants. That's so sweet. And we have a, yeah. a lot of Tokyo representation in the chat. Oh, and Shirley okay. says when she was growing up in Japan, there was a small local park that she played in every day. And when she moved to America, there weren't as many accessible parks as that. Ah, one. that's yeah. good. That's good. Yeah, we have a lot of parks um, that are good. And 
I just want to raise the standard for the for the ones that aren't so good. <laughs> yeah, I don't know、um, what it's like in Tokyo, but、uh, whenever I've visited like Hong Kong, China, and now Taiwan,、mm -hmm. um, a lot、mm -hmm. of the playgrounds have these amazing. Uh, like exercise equipment, but like、oh. it's kind of like for like adults slash old people. You know, like there's that、um, there will be like a thing that you stand on and then you like you like walk, you like, you, like、yes. swing your legs and you walk. Or there's like things that like stretch out your arms or like provide lumbar support, and they're like sort of you know playgroundy, but they're also like exercisey.、Um, those are fun.、Um, Ann says that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh,、uh, Anne says that she's hoping to visit Tokyo next year when it, if it's safe to. And yes, I hope to as well.、Um, my friend Shirley, who's in the chat, is getting married there, so hopefully、uh, we can go. We were originally going to go last year, actually. So cool meet up. <laughs> meet up. We all need to meet up in, in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Sado Island. Kita says that they want to visit Sado Island. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah, I wonder what the tourism industry is going to look like in a year when、uh, it's、uh, much busier. Um, I also had a question for you, Frankie, from yesterday. You mentioned、mm -hmm. that you went to school in,、uh, you know, New York at SBA, and then you came back, decided to come back to Tokyo.、Um, wh when you came back, was it ever a challenging or difficult decision? In that, I'm sure having gone to SBA, you had a lot of friends there, and like support network. And then in Tokyo,、um, that's more of where you grew up, and. Trying to establish yourself, establish yourself in a slightly different market from, you know, the、mm -hmm. New York scene. Yep. Um. Yeah, I completely had to reinvent myself and reinvent my community. But、um, you know, I started working in a lot of like. I worked at an art gallery. I worked at a restaurant. I was like translating stuff for people and. Like I met so many people through my part-time jobs, and、yeah. like I went out a lot. Like every Friday, every Saturday, like I would go out <laughs> and meet people. So I like、oh. really put myself out there to meet people, and that was like if I didn't do that, like I don't think I would have like been able to like have the opportunity or people. Like it's it's really the fact that like people gave me an opportunity to paint for them. So. I probably met like a thousand people, and like wow, perhaps like the ten people that I met, <laughs> like gave me something that was like that led me to the next thing. So that's if so cool. I could give any advice to anybody, it's like go meet people. Meet people, yeah. yeah, that's that's very true. A lot of the opportunities that I've gotten have been through the most random experiences that、um, there's no way I could have like predicted. Actually,、uh, yeah. one fun like game that I used to play with、uh, guests on the show is we would—I forgot what we call it—like name that opportunity or something. But we would dissect. <laughs> we would we would look at like some cool opportunity that they had gotten to do, whether in life or their work, and dissect how that opportunity came about. Because I think sometimes people think like it's just this mysterious black box. Where brands just are like falling over to work with you, and I, you know,、yeah. sometimes that happens. But I think also、um, more often than you think, there's some interesting story about like, oh, I, you know, I was a basketball like,、uh, I was、yeah. a basketball fan, and then I met the someone who worked at the Warriors, and then they asked me to make all the, you know, shirts or something, stuff like、yeah. that. That that、uh, I think is more common than than、uh, one would expect. So, yeah. Absolutely,、Agreed、like the that. way that、um, I started doing doodle therapy,、uh, which I've I think I've shared before on the stream is actually the way that I got connected to the Adobe Live team originally was at a sticker making workshop, like in 2016,、um, and it was like a nine or eight or nine a.m. sticker making workshop,、um, 
I just wanted to make stickers and learn about how I can make stickers for free. And then we made stickers and then printed them out. And um, I made some stickers for my dog's leash. It's still on her leash today. Um, and then that's how I met the Adobe live team. And um, here we are five, that's almost five years cool. later. So yeah, I mean, who would have thought, like I didn't go to the sticker workshop thinking like, this will be great. I can meet like, you know, people for professionally, but um, you know, it just, it ends up working out if you have like overlapping interests and stuff. Yeah. It's like, you know, you need to have like a good balance of like what you can actually do. And then when you meet that person, like really shine, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you have to be ready. Cause like, if they like you and they're like, it, you know, you really like the person and they're like, oh yeah, we would love to give you this opportunity to like work together. And then you actually show up and, it, and then you have nothing to show. Then like, it's, it's like not a good balance. You have to be like a good person and also like have the skills set. <laughs> so like, totally. it's always like a good balance that you need to keep. But yeah, yeah. that's, that's it's cool that you went to a sticker workshop and then now here here you are like hosting the stickers <laughs> yeah um and i would say with my brief experiences having done recruiting and hiring um both in-house at dropbox as well as when i've hired assistants for my work um i would say that like showing up really gets you far ahead like even being the one person to follow up on the guest speaker who visits or um, reach out to that person that you want to work with. Like sometimes you'll not hear back and that's totally fine. But, um, the, you know, I like, for example, I would do recruiting events um, where students would, I would go to like design, design events at like colleges and stuff. And then students would uh, mm -hmm. ask me for my contact information. I would give it to them and I'd probably get like one email you know, after giving out my email, maybe like 50 times. So just simply showing up um, really goes a long way because um, oftentimes most other people aren't making that same effort. Um, oh, it's a cool, yeah. It's a cool question from the chat. Um, Keita Jones asks, uh, for both of us, do we, do you enjoy commissions or doing your own projects? That's a cool question because uh, yesterday we were talking about uh, how we do client projects as well as um, self-initiated commission commissions work. Um. Um, for me, I I like both. Um, I get different things out of both. Like I really like working with other people, so commissions are a way for me to do that naturally. Um, but I really enjoy the creative freedom that comes from my own projects. Like I would consider this cheap how design uh prompt that i've given myself to be like my own project and it would be super fun to make pokemon themed fabric for, for whoever wants you know if uh, the pokemon company wants to contact me feel free um but you know if that's not happening then i'm down to just make my own prompts as well um how about um, yourself frankie I like commission projects. Um, I know, I know that like, you don't have so much creative freedom all the time. Um, so that part, you know, that's the part that, that sucks, <laughs> but also, I, you know, when you like only do stuff for yourself, like you don't really push yourself to get out of your comfort zone. I, I know it's important to like establish your own style and, and be consistent and everything. Um, and if that's selling all the time, like that's good. Do, do the thing that sells and that makes you happy. I think that's, that would be like the perfect blend between like what you want to do and making a living. But I think when people ask you to do commissions, it's a chance for you to like do some market research. Like what is somebody willing to throw down like a couple thousand dollars or like a couple hundred dollars? Like what, what is somebody willing to throw down money for? And why me? <laughs> like, it's it's a good chance to ask those questions to that person who's asking you to commission stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. and see if, see if that's just a unique opportunity or see if, like, that is something that the people really want out of you and really, like, kind of reconsider, like, you know, your direction. So 
I like I like commission projects uh, a lot for that reason that like I know I know that like what what people want me to do like I was only gonna do the Darimas for one project and um, leave it at that but like it turned out like everyone on my Instagram wanted to buy one from me oh. so I continued to make Darimas for people and then now I like kind of looked at the concept again and reconsidered the concept again and then I decided to make it my own so now I decided to paint like not in months as long as people want to buy it but like I like painting them as well yeah. so that's something that is why why throw out a successful business model <laughs> so like I just like decided to like continue with that and um I really reworked funny. why throw out added. a successful business model yeah that's why funny. yeah yeah uh. <laughs> um, that's funny yeah yeah that's very true uh i definitely have pushed myself in directions that were unexpected to me because uh you know a client requested it and then i investigated and then found out that like oh i could also do this this style so yeah the answer to your question kita is a mix of both i like to have um i like to have client and personal projects going on at the same time because I feel like they give me different things. I get that collaborative aspect from the client projects. Um, and then I also get that like true freedom, you know, just from the conversation being between myself and, and me in my own head, you know, like I don't have to actually explain anything to anyone, which is, which is always nice too. So it's like a mix of both. Um, and Anne is saying we should all, we should all coincidentally show up in Japan at the same time next year. Yeah, very just, true. Oh wow, what a coincidence! Oh, you too. What a coincidence! <laughs> "Quote unquote, like, oh coincidence." Yeah, we should definitely meet up in Japan. Yeah, let's do it. Um, and if you have any other questions like this, like um, Kido is asking, feel free to ask us in the chat. It's always really fun to hear everyone's answers. Okay, cool. So now I'm sort of filling in the spaces. I think I'm going to add one more Pokemon. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in here. Uh, let's see. What other Pokemon should I add? That's, that's in my starting lineup. I would say. I mean, I have Mewtwo in my lineup, but I don't. Cool. Mewtwo's kind of a jerk sometimes. I mean, he's just, he, Mewtwo's just upset because um, humans yeah, have not treated... Yeah, the experimenting on him. Yeah, so I totally understand, but at the same time, uh, he is kind of not my aesthetic. I, maybe oh. Mew? <laughs> Mew! Mew! Oh, speaking of Mew, um, you have some exciting news with your... Kitten. Yeah. So, um, let's just say that, um, that my friend found a kitten who was abandoned, um, and is about three weeks old based on my assumption <laughs> and needs somebody to nurse it back to health. And I am that person. So after this, uh, session, I am going to go pick up a three week old kitten. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Bottle feed it milk. Um, yeah, and it was like an abandoned kitten um, somewhere in Tokyo. And these crows were like attacking its <gasps> siblings. Its siblings oh. actually did it. The crows got to it before um, my friend could. And so you they were crows. only able to. Yeah, crows pretty much attack anything that's small <laughs> here. So sad, um, crows. Like I've seen crows attack sparrows before. Um, so, yeah, yeah. And then, so, like, this was the only survivor. So it's got, like, this story, and it's three weeks old, and it's tiny, and its name is Peanut. <laughs> oh, so. that's so cute. So if you go to my stories, you know, in like probably five hours, you'll only see like kitten posts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The adventures of um, Peanut. Yeah, I'm, but I'm I'm afraid to like 
make it like so much news about him because he might not make it like his chance of survival oh. is at risk because he's a neonatal cat and um yeah if he can make it to like two months then i'll be more confident that he'll be fine but like this next couple of weeks is going to be crucial <laughs> so oh. i don't know he may not survive but at least like there are no crows in my house <laughs> that will attack yeah. him and you have yeah. another cat right i do i have a grandma cat she is she is um she just sleeps all day her name is snow she's a white cat she i also rescued her from the street she was about to get like hit by a car um no. and it was getting it was getting really cold it was september and it gets pretty cold in the winter here in tokyo so i decided to take her home took her to the vet make sure she wasn't made sure she wasn't microchipped um and like i asked the neighbors in that area i'm like it's, it's just right around my house and um they were like yeah no we don't know who she belonged to so mm. i was kind of like vigilant to see if anybody would show up but nobody showed up so i decided to keep her and she's been with me for like five years now so i have I actually think she's like a thousand years old i think she's like a mythological creature because i thought she would for sure die that year <laughs> like she was so old when i found her but she's still she's still around so who knows if maybe she's like a robot that the government sent to spy on me sometimes i have questions about her <laughs> that's funny yeah. yeah i sometimes think about what my dog mochi was up to before we rescued her um, oh yeah, it's I crazy. To, yeah, it's crazy to think that they had this like whole life and all these adventures, you know. And it's like yeah. I can find out information about anything, you know, just by googling it. Like I, yeah, I've just been researching the most random things um, on Wikipedia lately, and mm -hmm. uh, but I can't Google like what was Mochi up to, like pre two thousand fourteen, you know, or like. What, right. what did Mochi see on the streets? Um, yeah. Kita says, good karma comes to those who help creatures smaller than yourself. That's really sweet. I think that's true. I like to think that's true. Maybe that's why I'm doing it. <laughs> it's like I've, I have too much bad karma. I need to neutralize it. For too too much. much bad karma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I love cats. And I like dogs too, but I don't know what to do. I don't even know how to hold a dog. Like I feel, I feel so awkward around dogs. I don't know what oh, to do. Oh, really? With dogs. Yeah. dogs are just very, a lot, oftentimes cuddly. And if you pet a dog right the first time, unless it's extremely traumatized, it will be your friend and understand. Like, uh, I, I, yeah. You know, like dogs know people. You know, like they know. Yeah. They know like which person they like and which person they don't like I think I fall into the category of the person that they don't like I think they can sniff it out that I don't know what to do with them even though I don't dislike them like I, I want to be friends with a dog but I can't and I don't think they like that indecision on my part and they're like yeah not this person <laughs> oh yeah well you know? dogs will follow your lead so if you uh, aren't uh certain if, if they if they're if they sense you're just like I don't know then they might be more like, Ooh, I don't know about you either. <laughs> and sometimes a, a, dogs are also really um, smart and vocal. Like if a dog doesn't want to play with you, he'll just make it obvious, you know, that they might growl at you. And that's their sign of just like verbalizing, like, I don't want to hang out, you know, and then you just like leave them alone and it's fine. Right. So, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll continue to be optimistic. <laughs> Yeah, like a dog um, growling at you, I don't think it is a bad sign. I actually think it's a really good sign that the dog is letting you know, like, I don't like it. So, so stop doing that. Um, yeah, yeah. And hi to Helena Lazio for joining us in the chat. Uh, Kita asked a really interesting question, which is, if we, we were banned from using Adobe products for eternity, my God, what did I do? What would what? my backup programs be? That's what? a really interesting question because I feel like uh, Adobe products, other than maybe like Google Chrome, are the app that I apps that I use the most. Other than like my internet browser and camera, I, f I feel like I just I'm, I'm constantly have Photoshop open. So, um, yeah, I've never had to think of this 
scenario because it's like I started using Photoshop like bootleg bootleg Photoshop when I was like in high school like when Same. I was like I was like cool CS2 <laughs> <It's like version laughs> two. yeah I was like slash eight I learned yeah. flash in high school like that was the actual <laughs> class or like lesson that I took in for my journalism class and we were like this is the wave of the future this is how we can make like interactive web pages cool cool um, that's so cool yeah it, the internet <laughs> the know, internet like the, the yeah. textbook with the boy surfing on a skateboard or something like through the interwebs it's like internet it's like a 1997 textbook but like um yeah like i feel like photoshop has been part of my vocabulary since i was a high school student and i formed my identity around being able to use adobe software so it's like not being able to use a language for me <laughs> and it would yeah. be so dire like... if i couldn't but before but before um photoshop before adobe i was using microsoft paint and before that i was using mm. a program called kid Picks, like when i was like four or five years old <laughs> So I think I would return to using kid pics. <laughs> um, if That's anybody cute. knows, if anybody's old enough to know what that is. <laughs> yeah, you know, I keep thinking of other programs and then I'm like, oh wait, that's an Adobe program. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, when oh, I think about, <laughs> yeah, like uh, this isn't directly answer the question, but when I was in high school, I actually learned how to code using Dreamweaver, which I actually think is a fantastic <laughs> product name, Dreamweaver. Um, so, so I'm just trying to think about like the OG products that I would all like just be comfortable with, but then I'm like, oh, that's a, a product too. Yeah. <laughs> it picks. Um, I did a lot of stuff in Microsoft paint, which I think is like fancier now. Um, but I haven't had a PC in a, in a while. Oh, cool. We've got some Dreamweaver fans in the chat. Yeah. I love dream. I have such a soft spot in my heart for Dreamweaver because that's how I that's the program where I learned how to code cool yeah okay so I'm working on my pattern and I'm trying to figure out where to put it's kind of like solving a puzzle you know and you you want to but you want the puzzle to be balanced so I'm trying yeah. to figure out like how to space out my little um pokemon here this is a minin it's um, one of my favorite Pokemons. I believe it's from the, it was introduced in Pokemon uh, Silver from the Johto, Johto League era. I stopped playing Pokemon when I was like probably in middle school, but I'm very excited for the remakes that are going to come after the uh, success of, of uh, Pokemon Let's Go, which is the, uh, remake of the original games or if it's like a update of the original games helena says they love um photoshop um yeah lisette says at one point in their studies they had to draw on a program called paint.net it's like paint but layers that's great yeah i i think uh that's probably the, just the one thing that i wanted in paint was a sense of layers Amy wants to know if anyone is currently playing Pokemon Snap, which I've heard is a new um, game out in the Pokemon universe. Hmm. Let's see. I'm trying to decide what other Pokemon I should add in. I feel like I have space for one more. I'm just going to draw these leaves to fit fit in the space. Yeah, we have like a few minutes. Oh. Yeah, we have about um, five. We have about eight minutes left. So it's been awesome to have you on the chat. And I feel like we've had a lot of like real talk about um, the creative process. So that's been like inspiring and like refreshing for me. Um, it's always just cool to hear these thoughts you know, from different uh, and new people. Uh, Reverb Mike asks Squirtle. So I actually have a call back to Squirtle here. These are his sunglasses. Um, if you 
if you uh, know what I'm referring to. Um, well, asking Frankie about her dream or bucket list projects makes me curious about what everyone else's uh, bucket wow, list or yeah, dream, dream projects are. And this could be like either in a work context or, you know, even just like personal. Um, you don't have to have someone like ask you to do something to do it. Um, so uh, yeah, let us know, like, what are your dream projects. I loved Frankie's answer about working with the parks uh, to create more like local parks and a mural program for for uh, for that. I think, uh, you know, for me right now, I would like to work on really, really big walls, like really big murals. I think that's kind of where I'm at in my mural journey. I've done a lot of um, like decent sized walls for in inside um, and I've I'm currently working on a really big mural project that's going to be very tall, but I would love to just get m more in that game. And I feel like it's a totally different ball game because it has a has a new layer of like physical, um, physical like strength that's required to work on those types of projects. It's like an endurance challenge. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Those days are behind me. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, I'm actually really curious. Um, when you worked on like your big project, like the parking garage one, was that you by yourself or did you have like a team? Um, the one I did in America was, um, I, I hired people there. So I, I just hired people locally and I couldn't choose who like they just, the city just hired people for me. So I had to go through a lot of different people because they just didn't know how to paint. So it was really stressful working with a team. I think when you paint large murals, it's no longer you yourself painting this big project and so many people are involved. And yeah. like, I'm from Japan. I speak English and everything, but I'm from Japan. And it was just like, everything was done so differently. There was like a, a huge like culture shock there. I And nobody wanted to take orders from like a little half Japanese girl. <laughs> so oh, I, see. I had a lot of issues, like kind of asserting my dominance and um yeah for like the first time I felt like oh I, I understand what people in the United States are talking about like gender equality and all of that <laughs> yeah um, so I faced a lot of that firsthand but that's that's separate from the actual work that I did um and everything was done freehand so all of the patterns that I wow. did were all free um, uh, the scaling was all freehand. I did not use a projector or anything. And I feel like if you're painting a large mural, like, and if you have access to a projector, then I think that's a really great way to get started and make your outlines all like proportional and everything. Um, but yeah, once, once that part is done, like it's pretty much, you have to eyeball everything. So, um, it's, skills. you know, you need a lot of stamina, you need skills, like you need to be a good planner. You need to know how to like, kind of, um, improvise a lot so yeah. i like i like that part i like directing murals but i don't necessarily want to paint murals so much anymore because it's just so tiring and like oh, every see. time i'm painting a mural i'm like like why am i doing this to myself <laughs> um it yeah you get really tired it really makes your back feel like you're like 70 years old sometimes so yeah it's it's definitely a, a young person's activity yeah i, I, I wake up now and i feel like a, like i was hit by a bus the previous that's night that's exactly <laughs> how i feel that's exactly how i feel as I, I wake up and i feel like i've been like hit by a car and i'm like oh okay day two <laughs> of mural yeah. um yeah well i could talk on and on about this topic i do think painting murals is can be a very stressful activity because there's so many pieces involved like insurance equipment rental rentals you know, if you're working with an assistant and managing the the mm. client process. Uh, but we are actually at the end of the stream. Um, I've zoomed out here and you can see Frankie's piece as well. And it's been cool to, you know, create these patterns from basically scratch. Um, if you want to see my final piece or Frankie's final piece, um, please feel free to follow us on the internets. Frankie is at Furpuff on Instagram and at Frankie Sihi on Twitter. 
and I am at by Alice Lee on both. And also if you have any questions, like if you watch the stream after the live portion and you want to ask any questions, you can also uh, ping me there and I'm happy to answer. Um, yeah, I want to say thanks to uh, Frankie um, for joining us. Uh, you know, even though we didn't get to all the questions, um, if, for example, Celine, if you want to know if how, you know, Frankie goes about saying no to certain projects, we actually talked a little bit about that yesterday on day one. So it's been um, great to have you, Frankie. And um, hopefully we can all have, you know, a coincidental meetup in Tokyo eventually when things open up. And until then, um, I hope that everyone has a great rest of your day and that you take care. Bye. Bye.